In this video we're going to see how we can go from functions to objects because our example where we use functions badly and had highly duplicative and repetitive code it becomes unwieldy anytime we have more than a few objects. So with this what is going to work much better is to create an object template and to do this we are creating what is called a class. A class will be an object template that we are going to be able to use to create an unlimited instances of that class object inside our program. So starting with our functions documents we don't have to recreate everything we're going to start with the class template and inside of that we will start migrating some of this code over because there's no point in having to rewrite all of it. So to create a class file the easiest way to do it inside of processing is to click the arrow next to the file name and select new tab. When we do that it prompts us to provide a name for this file. Now by convention classes do begin with a capital letter. Our normal files or normal functions they'll start with lowercase variables lowercase but a class will begin with a capital letter. So to do this I'm going to refer to this class as box and then I hit OK. Now we have our box file. Now the syntax for our class file is fairly straightforward. We start out with the word class then we list our class name and then put in our curly braces. Now once the curly braces are in there are three sections within our class. The first is our properties, our second will be the constructor, and our third will be the methods. The properties are like the variables we've been using for our object before. So we see these properties that we have x, y with height, speed, x, speed, y. So we will reuse those properties again here inside our box object. So the properties are the variables that will be associated with each instance. So each instance or version of this object when we put it into our program will have its own unique x, y with height, speed, x, and speed, y. The constructor is a special function that we make that then allows us to set the values of the properties of our object. And we also then call this constructor when we wish to create a new instance or new copy of this class object into our main program. So the constructor method looks a little bit different in that it doesn't have a return type but it is now named the same as the class file and then as the curly braces. Now we just need to provide values for x, y, width, height, speed, x, and speed, y and I can go back into my main program and copy those and paste that over. Now as I do this we can see how it's starting to take shape. So my constructor assigns the values to the object the properties are the properties of this object and the methods are the things that this program or this object knows how to do. So if our class was a dog we may have a bark method, a sit method, a walk method, a rollover method, a play dead method, an eat method. All of these would be things that it knows how to do. So methods are the verbs and the nouns are the properties that describe this object. So we have verbs and nouns if that helps from a, an analogy point of view. Now I'm going to go and grab a couple of these functions. We need update position, check boundaries and display, so we'll copy those, go and paste it. Now I'm going to rename these a little bit and just say update, check boundaries, that still works, and display. So, and by hitting Command T or Auto Format, I can clean up my indents so that I can see how everything looks a little bit cleaner. So all of these methods, the constructor, and the properties 
exist inside our class curly braces. So we have our three methods, update, check boundaries, and display. So it kind of looks about the same as what we had before. Now I can delete all of that from my main program. We'll leave clear background because that's part of the main program's information. That isn't part of what our um, box needs to know about. The box does not need to know how to clear the screen. That's not what the box does. Now, I'm off to a good start. I've defined my box class. I'm now in my main program and now I'm going to create a box and I'll just call this B0. So we have floats, ints, strings, now we also have box. Now that I have my variable of type box, we just say B0 is equal to new box and we put the parentheses after the name of it and that parentheses is how we call a method or function. So clear background, I put the parentheses after it and that's calling the clear background function. So here by saying b0 equals new box, I'm now calling that function. The next thing that I can do is say b0 dot update and b0 dot display. Remembering that our box has an update, update also calls check boundaries, and then it has a display method. So it knows how to update itself and display it. My main program doesn't need to know what box is doing to update itself. It doesn't need to know what box is doing to display itself. It just needs to call on those methods. When I run my program, I'll see now it looks the same as before. The real advantage here is now that I have done this once, I can do it a few times. And if you remember as we work through the bad functions example, I mean a few typing issues there. But in the bad functions example, we ran into having highly duplicative code and it got pretty ugly. So now I'll just do a little copy pasting to speed it up. And when we run this, We'll see, I forgot a semicolon, try again, now it runs. But all three are starting in the same place. So that's problematic. But what we could do is we could vary this. Instead of say start at 400, we could start at a random value. And what I'm going to do is start 200 pixels in from the left as my minimum value. And then my maximum is going to be 200 pixels in from the size of my screen, so then that's width minus 200. Now if I go back to my project and look, I can see it's 800 wide, so we could see that width minus 200 it would just be 600. But by doing this and saying width here, if I change the size of my program, my box is going to always then be in the correct position. And I'll repeat that with height as well. Now if we run it, we'll see that we have three all starting at random positions. And each time they're starting in a new position. Now we could also modify the speed so that they move at different speeds. Using random once more and if I just vary it say 2 comma 7, then that means we're having a variance of 2 and can do the same thing for the y speed. So we'll have our three objects that are now moving at different rates and different speeds so it's appearing a little bit more natural in its randomness. So this is a good first step. The second 
thing that I want to go into today is that when we have a constructor, we can pass values in. It'd be nice if I could say, hey, when I make a new box, I want to tell that box what color I want it to be. So if I wanted to pass in a color into it, so I could pass in an RGB color. So this first one, I'll pass in the color red. And then the next one, I'll pass in the color green. And the third one, I'll pass in the color blue. Now, as I do this, it's telling me that the constructor box doesn't accept these values. It says box doesn't exist as I'm trying to pass in this color value. So now we have to go into box and modify it because I'm like trying to say, hey box, I want you to be this new color. So when I look at the constructor, I want box to accept a value and we'll just call it new color. Now if I go back here tells me, hey, the parameter of new color is not being used. Okay, And I look here, no error message anymore in that file. But as I'm looking here, I can't use this because new color is only going to exist within this set of curly braces inside my constructor. So when it comes to display where I want to fill it with that particular color, I can't do it unless I have a variable or property to store that information. So I will make one and just call it C. So I have a color variable, I'll just call it C. Then I can now grab this from my constructor and say C is equal to new color. And as I do that, we can now use that in our display where I can fill it with the color C. Now, if I run my program, I will see my objects are indeed different colored. So the key thing is I'm passing in a parameter. This parameter I'm passing in, I have to have a way to store that data. So I need a variable property. And then I set it equal to that parameter that is passed in. Now notice the syntax here is we have to give that parameter a name and we have to specify to processing what kind of value it is. If we don't do that, it doesn't know what to do with this information or how to interpret it. So it's important that we do it that way. And then once we've done that and it's a property, the same as x, y, width, and height and speed x, speed y, c is now a property that we can access in a later method. In this case, I access it in my display where I fill with that color. 